Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. In a recent video, a uh, prominent YouTuber and friend of mine, IFG, Evan Alexander, uh, called me a fish whisperer. <laughs> you can see the, uh, <laughs> the video here, and I'll include a link. He, he talked about how I had figured out a way to uh, work well with, uh, with African cichlids, fish, fish like these here, and uh, I thought the whole thing was kind of kind of funny, but uh, I'll tell you, uh, keeping African cichlids uh, did uh, did change me as as a fish keeper, and I'll tell you why. I made a list and it's not it doesn't include everything because there's more more areas that keeping cichlids have changed me and made me I think uh, a better fish keeper and uh, but I, I've got about six or seven here and, I'll, and I might even think of a few more as we go along so stay tuned for the inevitable bonus bonus point at the end but uh, certainly having fish like this forces you to have to deal with and understand filtration. You always have to understand filtration when you're keeping any kind of fish. But when you keep fish that produce the amount of ammonia and waste that these bigger fish uh, produce because of the amount of food they consume, because uh, by nature they produce a lot of ammonia, you really, really have to have, to have your wits around how to remove uh, how to remove unwanted things from the water column, from the aquarium. And whether that uh, be through uh, more water turnover, uh, you know, keeping, um, uh, staying in that sweet spot, sweet spot between five and 10 times an hour. So in other words, if you have a hundred gallon aquarium, your filtration should be turning over, be, you know, between 500 to a thousand gallons an hour. So being in that sweet spot, uh, what are you running that water through? Uh, in what order is your filtration, you know, is your media set up? What kind of filtration are you using? And, uh, you know, I've had to learn about bigger, stronger types of filtration, uh, some filtration, canisters, uh, you know, things of that nature. So uh, keeping African cichlids will certainly get you to uh, to explore and expand in the area and understand the area of filtration, media, water turnover, filter maintenance, and things of that nature. It really, uh, at, at, and this kind of goes hand in hand with that, you really have to understand how uh, the nitrogen cycle works if you're gonna keep a fish who produce so much ammonia. You have to really understand uh, what you know what those test results mean uh, the impact that ammonia can have on your fish what are the signs that there may be ammonia in your tank and uh, and what to do about it and, and it's also taught me a lot about the nitrate levels and at what point should I uh, be paying attention to them at what point should I uh, be concerned and and also how not to be over or, or unnecessarily concerned so uh, the nitrogen cycle uh, certainly was a, a point that I've learned a lot about. Oxygen, I mean oxygen, how uh, oxygen gets into the water, how these fish uh, pull oxygen from the water, and how I can ensure that, that these fish uh, have enough oxygen. Big fish need big oxygen, and if you don't understand how to keep the tank well oxygenated, uh, in the event of um, a power failure or uh, there's there's lots of ways you can actually uh, choke these fish out and end up uh, you know depriving them of oxygen having them die off on you I actually have a video on it I think it's called are we choking our fish I'll put a link up there and uh, you can check it out but I've had to learn about oxygen and maintaining proper oxygen levels signs that there may be um, not enough oxygen and 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 the signs that there is enough oxygen all those are very important points I've also had to learn about nutrition and as cichlid keepers 
we try to um, get the best size and color out of our fish and that gets into the area of quality nutrition, uh, proper lighting, it gets into the area of backgrounds, uh, you know, the back background color, the color of the substrate and how they affect color, how water quality affects color, um, spectrum of lights, uh, pecking order, uh, whether a fish is dominant or subdominant, how all these things relate to pulling out the best possible color uh, from your fish. And so these are things that you're, again, you're forced to learn about and, and in some cases, all fish keepers need to know about them. I, I also had to learn a lot about ways of dealing with um, the fish asserting dominance and aggression and the different kinds of aggression that can, that can exist. There, there are fish that, that are trying to eliminate another fish and there are fish that are just simply asserting their, um, their position of dominance and once it's, it seems that it's understood, they back off. These are very different kinds of aggression and being able to recognize the kind of aggression that's gonna result in the destruction and, and, and death of another fish and being able to take the, the fast appropriate steps to handle it, that's, that, that's, that's been uh, very, very crucial for me in this journey. Uh, and, and probably the biggest, the biggest lesson that I've learned in keeping African cichlids and, and you know, large fish like this uh, is, is patience. You know, the, whether you're waiting for a fish to color up or, um, you know, you, you want to, uh, you know, you want to have certain kinds of fish, uh, certain kinds of unicorn fish that you're looking for and, and all the kind of things related to, uh, to putting together uh, the, the kind of uh, collection of fish in the kind of tank that you want, it all takes, it all takes a lot of patience. We, you know, I certainly would love to have just snapped my fingers and had it all come together instantly, but that's not how it works. And it had to be done one step at a time, uh, whether we're talking about the acquiring of the tanks, the setting up of the tanks, the plumbing for the sumps, the setting up of filtration, the, the, uh, uh, the establishment of beneficial bacteria. Uh, so I have a, a stable tank. Uh, tanks becoming stable, uh, think, you know, adding new fish uh, to the tank, all of this, all of it, uh, its success very often depends on the ability to, to be patient. And a couple of the major mistakes that I've made uh, both here in Nashville and also back in California uh, with not just cichlids but all fish uh, have been when I, I became impatient and tried to do too much too fast. So uh, I don't necessarily consider myself a fish whisperer. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he got that, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fish whisperer, but, I, but I'm starting to get a feel a feel for them and, uh, and a, knack, a knack for these fish. They've taught me so much. They forced me to learn so much. If you want to get a, uh, a real crash course and be forced into action, uh, I suggest you get into, get into the world of large African cichlids. All right, any comments or questions, be sure to note them below and I'll respond to as many as I can get to. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's Saturdays at 11 o'clock Central. Great group of fish keepers get together for a great discussion. We also have a great group over on Facebook at Ben O apostrophe Cichlid. Come on by again, uh, a great group of supportive fish keepers there. Follow on Instagram for things you don't normally see on YouTube at ben.o.cichlid. And if you'd like to support the continued creation of content on this channel, please consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang, a Patreon monthly supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month. Details are in the description. And don't forget to sub, hit that uh, thumbs up and bell. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.